Hey friends, welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. By the title of this video, you know that we are comparing cover stitch to serger because not everybody knows that they are two different things and what the heck they do. a dedicated serger video for anybody interested I will link that in the description box below I kind of just go over what is a serger what it does just the total basics of a serger if that's something that you're looking to purchase or you're wondering should I be purchasing it check out that video because I don't actually recommend it for everybody so description box at the end of this video all right so let's start with the similarities between a cover stitch machine and a serger because we looking at them they do they can look similar depending on the brand and model and all that kind of thing so the similarities are that they do both use multiple thread cones they'll typically either use three or four threads and that's because there are multiple things going on in them like you'll see two needles on the each machine sometimes you can knock out a needle on your serger but typically it's a four thread two needle overlock that's the other thing overlockers and sergers are the same thing cover stitchers are different And another similarity they have is that they both have loopers. So these are the parts that go back and forth on the inside of the machine and they really make the chain of stitches to kind of tie everything together on your fabric. And the similarities end there. <laughs> I mean, yes, they are both larger machines. They have inner workings that are a little bit more complicated than a sewing machine but that's just because there's more threads and there's more things that need to happen to make the thread chain and that kind of thing so let's talk about the differences so a serger is generally for construction you can do other things like pin tucks and flat lock seams and more advanced techniques but generally if you're looking at buying a serger it's probably going to be for constructing knit garments yes you can use it to finish off raw edges of wovens and things like that but the biggest thing that you would I would think you would purchase a serger for is constructing knit garments now a cover stitch on the other hand is you're going to purchase that more for um, for top stitching and for hemming so basically the same thing but hemming obviously you turn under and then you top stitch that down you might be using a double needle on your sewing machine this would replace that on knit garments um, and then you can also use it for decorative features top stitching down seams that kind of thing on knit garments again and you can use it for wovens too if you want that double or even triple needle look I personally love the triple needle stitch it does take more thread and another needle and you don't see it a lot in ready to wear so if you're trying to mimic ready to wear then you wouldn't necessarily go for the triple needle stitch we're kind of getting off topic but you can do either two or three needle stitch on your cover stitch a lot of cover stitches will actually come with more advanced stitches as well I mine has like a lot I don't even know how many I do have a separate video just on my cover stitch machine which of course will be linked down in the description box for you to check out at the end of this video now if you're enjoying this video make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos another thing about sergers that is different from cover stitches is they have knives yeah knives sharp blades that cut fabric and you might be thinking why would you cut your fabric well the point of the the blades, the knives on a sewing, on a serger is to trim excess fabric. My serger, I'm not sure all of them, but my serger has about a quarter inch seam allowance or thread chain width. So anything past that that's hanging over the edge is going to get cut off. And this is why sergers are really just for construction because you, you can't fit fabric under the foot on the right side because they'll get cut off yes you can disable i think on most sergers you can disengage the knives so that you're not cutting but you still can't go further to the right because your looper comes up and will get caught in your fabric causing a giant jam ask me how i know <laughs> so with a serger you are really just sewing or surging along the edge of the fabric again if you're doing fancy things like pin tucking or flat locking you can fold your fabric and then it'll be on the fold and you open it up 
and do things that way but generally you're just serging right on the fold and that's what those knives are for to trim it nice and even so that your thread chain will kind of hang over the edge and loop around and be really locked in hence the name overlock in contrast to that a cover stitch machine you can cover stitch anywhere it's like a sewing machine where it has a larger throat throat plate throat area where you can feed in your fabric and um, so you can really do that anywhere on a garment like how you would sew on a sewing machine. Now I've kind of hinted at, at it already but a serger makes a chain of stitches so you can actually if you run that machine without fabric underneath a chain of thread will come out and on your fabric it kind of looks the same from the front and the back. Not exactly, but fairly similar to the point where you know that it's made on a serger. And then on a cover stitch, you're going to see, if you look at something that you bought at the store, if you look at the hems, you'll see on the front that there's two rows of stitches and then on the back is like a chain like we would think of on a serger. The front and the back are definitely different and actually on a cover stitch you don't want to be running that machine without fabric underneath so it doesn't make a chain. The threads coming out don't actually form a chain, they only will tie with the fabric under the foot. That's a bigger difference between a cover stitch and a serger. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful for anybody who was looking for this answer. I do see it a lot pop up in Facebook groups and things like that so I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you kind of some insight onto which machine you should be looking at if you're looking to purchase a new machine or not. Now you kind of know the differences and what they look like and you know that I have two other videos in the description box if you're looking to further your information on sergers or cover stitch machines. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. I will catch you on Friday. Bye!